to remember that time back in 2003. You get a good grade on your report card. You show it to your dad, and on the report card, you get all C. The most beautiful thing that you see is your dad's thumbs up. And your dad is just so proud of you. He decided to give you a nice little treat. So he decided to stop by GameStop and talk to his buddy to see what's the best game to surprise his child. <laughs> And behold, the Holy Grail. Mwah. You have what it takes. Different. We battle as one. It is now time to use what you've learned. So, you have finally accepted your destiny. Let the game begin! Gladius, one of the most underdog game of all time. The Gladius was inspired by the movie Gladiator in 2000, directed by Russell Crowe with five Emmy Awards. Gladiator, the movie where Maximus, the Roman general who used to serve the Emperor and lead the war against the Barbarian, and soon the Emperor's son betrayed Maximus and framed him with the murder of the Emperor that so beloved. And soon, the Gladiator has been tossed into the arena, buying all these challenges and obstacles that he's overcoming, and avenging the death of his sons and wife. And at the end of the movie, I'm not going to spoil, but holy crap, that was a twist. So back to the game. Wait, what? A game with this so beautiful and masterful. You're probably wondering why, where has it been this whole time? What is this game? The long lost forgotten masterpiece is here. It can't be. The story was developed by Activision and LucasArt, where the ancient time between Imperia and Nordic. Oh my god. LucasArt was directed by the actual George Lucas, who filmed Star Wars. It's a name I've not heard in a long time. Other games are similar by LucasArts is Star Wars Battlefront 2, PlayStation, Xbox. Before the dark times. Before the dark time, when Disney is now run by Kathleen Kennedy. God help us all. Screw Star Wars. Yeah, right. I love The Last Jedi. She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. <laughs> no! Bob Iger was in charge at the time, sold it to George Lucas. He was retired, then got rehired. And the most prominent CEO who's in charge of greedy microtransaction loot box games that failed nowadays, such as Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefront 2, dog crap. The stock market just went down. <laughs> George Lucas' art was killed back in 2012 and shut down. Employees lost their job. Yeah! I declare bankruptcy! And sadly, LucasArts is finally dead. Gladiator has a god tier story behind the prologue, the beginning of the game. Most games, you really don't have that. You just introduce the whole world, throwing the characters in into one room, and you're like, well, where do I begin? But when it comes to Gladius, it all began with a great war between the Imperia and Nordic, and they were fighting against each other one to another. Blood was spilled, and therefore, the Dark God has been reborn high into the dark sky. The Valkyrie has come with their spears and their flying ponies, God who knows, and they're charging right at the Dark God, and there he breathed the dark flame at them. And then the last Valkyrie has survived, and she just charged right at the dragon. Boom, dead. God was slain once again. And the great war is over. Uh, the Nordic Imperia are hugging it together. Embracing the darkness that they endured. And or they build a great temple above it to contain this evil that is within. Therefore, Gladiator was born. Games has established across a four different region, Imperia, Nordic, the Western Expanse, and the Southern. And Gladiator is the game where they meet each other and fight and bring out their feeling rage from the Dark War. Instead of killing each other, they bring it into the game where it is contained and consolidated. Choosing Balan has advanced difficulty at the beginning of the game, where you start as Imperia. The main character, Valon's father, Munoz, has won the first high tournament ever, and he was crowned and Christian as a grand champion. You can feel this aura, you can feel the, 
the roar from the crowd. This game is yours. The Legionnaire, the Centurion, is a different class of soldiers. The AIs is more difficult, more unpredictable. And you can play with this companion, Ludo. You start off with the game and you go on this quest to rebuild your father's school. Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Munos? One night, Valen and Munos walked home from the game and suddenly they got ambushed by bandits. And the next moment, Munoz got murdered and Valen was spared. But why? I admire Valen's spirit that he got quickly back on his feet and decided to continue to fight in the games. Yusus, my old buddy! Yusus fought in the Great War with Munoz, Valen's father. And after the war, Munoz decided to retire. But after Munoz has been murder, he felt guilty and decided to assist Valen on his quest to rebuild the Great School. As a personal opinion, I prefer Valen's story. Him and Luda go on the quest to conquer Imperia and then Norda and then the last two to go to the high tournaments. No, 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 hold on. Who's the other person? Well, Ursula, the daughter of the Barbarian King. She's been locked up her whole life in the castle and she wondered if she ever going to be free. She and her brothers were born as twins from the mother and they grew up together. Her brother overseered her very closely. Her brother was announced by her that she, they're going to start a school. And school that where she can leave Norda and find an excuse to explore the world. And then soon enough, in the second quarter of the game, Valen and Ursula began to meet up into main characters. And they began to join forces, two schools into one. Now, Valen has a thing for her, but a lot. Like, he will literally bend his butt over and do anything she say. Like, super simp. Like, for real. Anyway... They met up each other, but he quickly left, and she is thirsty for him, I kid you not. But soon enough, they reunited after an ambush on the roadside, and she and him are decided to join school, officially. And now all four group has joined together. Ursula and Valen have this little tension between them where they're showing their flaws and the past of guilt of his father's murder and Ursula's freedom. The mystery of the necklace, how they entwine together. The Valkyrie and Valen's father fought in the Great War. So many potential behind the story. And there's some scenes in here and there between the gameplay. And I'm so interested and conflicted by that. The story is not hardcore raw. It's like very soft spoken and gentle between one to another and this is where the fun begins it is really up to you to choose either Valen or Ursula you can choose advanced or simple all right so let's talk about combat system gladiator was questionable at first where they announced it's going to be a tactical RPG this is like XCOM <laughs> Midnight Sun So here's the combat system for Gladius. There's axe, bows, javelin, magic, wizard rod, and other forms of magic. You can name anything you want. And the movement are really quite simple. You just move around where you want to move with limited amount of spaces. And you can decide what characters you can place in the arena before the game actually even begins. There are combos and execution based on the buttons and if you hit the red market with the white line just like golf games and there are different sets of warriors that you can choose and each warrior has their own skills to perform. XCOMs and other games based on tactical movements are very precise and God made the right decision. But when it comes to Gladius, the decisions are not really life changing unless when you're not in the arena, when you're out in the world traveling and you're going to get ambushed by bandits or dark legionnaires. Your life and death situation is actually taken seriously. If you fail, the game is completely over. But let's back to the game. So in the game, you can execute, you can cast magic. If you perform enough combos and other movements, your skill traits actually build up during the gameplay and you can execute powerful moves. And in game, it's just so lovable and desirable. And I just love this so much. The words cannot be described. Boy, did Lucas R prove people wrong. Tactical RPG is so successful in this game. One of my favorite things about Gladius is you have this open world where it's so simple and the mechanic is not even complicated. There's so much to interact with the world. You can unlock secrets and Easter eggs. You can run into villains that you can skip the story as a potential to defeat them. And you get to explore across the Imperia, Nordic, and the Western Expanse where there are so many different varieties of enemy that you can be ambushed. And once you 
pursue the story that the last expanse is a southern desert is so treacherous. And back at the end of the game, you get to go to high tournament. Once you achieve victory in each gladiator game, you get this amazing reward system. The sound is so sad, but it's like eargasm. <laughs> And another reward system I just love is actually the trophy room. What's so special about this trophy room is if you conquer each region of each tournament, Norda, Imperia, the Step Beast, the Expanse, you get this update graphics and they actually improve over time. And it's kind of like eyegasm to your eyes and so rewarding. Hands down to the arts team of LucasArts. When you select Lee to choose the game to fight in the arena, the artwork of each game that you choose for the mode is so colorful, so vivid. There's so many stories behind each artwork and the history that has been illustrated across Imperia, Norda, Western, Expanse. And there's so many love behind it. So again, hands down to the art team. I just love it. One of the most impressive thing about Gladius in 2003 is actually the death animation. The animation back in 2003 is actually pretty impressive for an old game based on Xbox and PlayStation 2 engine. The animation for each type of warriors has their own unique way of dying, such as the javelin, the warrior, the viking, the wizard, where he just completely paralyzed. And others such as, it's just so revolutionary for this game back then. I just appreciate it at every single moment. Once you kill each character, you get this satisfying thing that really is a chemistry in your brain. Hmm, now now what we have here next. Oh, that's right, the weapon shop where you can go across each arena and it has their own shopkeeper that has their own background story. Each shop has their exclusive form of weapons, helmets, shields, armor, rings that cause a special effect on each character that you play in the game during the arena. There are so many varieties and different types of that you can actually use. There's no microtransaction or loot box behind this. There are so many dialogues in this game. Not only there's cutscenes, but there's actually playable level selection. The story is so freaking rich and full of fur of dialogues. I don't know how the game does it, but there's so many decisions and choices that you can choose, whether it can impact a positive or negative on the people that surround you, and that can give you consequences or reward that affects you through the game as you progress. Again, well done to this team of LucasArts, and I probably will see this for a long time. Now, there's something that we have to talk about, costumes. Nowadays, games with microtransaction and loot boxes, and you gotta buy these skins. But when it comes to Gladius, once you select the armor from the shop, you can actually choose different colors or outfit by default and as you progress through the game there's more option being available to the main characters especially at the end there are a few honorable mentions in this game that you must see earlier i actually mentioned skills you can choose so many different kinds of skills as you level up through the game you don't have to do specific skills early on. You can just save up and go to the very last skills on the tree as a shortcut. Different skill sets such as you can form into a wolf or a cat or a bear. You can choose a combo attack, one, two, three, four. And you can use a different element such as fire, water, earth, infinity attacks. And there are different level of progression that you can use to execute on the enemies. A quick shout out to Yusus. One of my favorite things about this game is the loading screen. I hate loading screen, but this, I just love it. Now, the rest of the video game reviews. Here's a spoiler alert. All right, now let's get into it. Once you conquer the tournament of Imperia and Nordic, you and Valen and Ursula has moved on to the third region, which is the actually Steppies. And you meet the third main character, which is named Aiji. She's the amazing archer and her skills are unquestionable. But at first, they decide to test her skills if she's worthy or not to join the school. And boom, here we go. There you go. Wow. And then the next thing, the kicking ass in the tournaments. And now as the story got darker, enemies come out and come nowhere. Dark sorcerers, necromancers, dark legionnaires. And the dark time has come back from the dark war. And there are questions between Val and Ursula as why their connections are correlated with the darkness that is coming. And things are about to turn. Who are the villains in Gladius? There are plenty of villains in Gladius, but one of the weaknesses in this game the villains are kind of scattered and the cutscenes are very short and limited. You're like, what the heck are going on in the background during the arena of the games that you're progressing through? One of my favorite villains in this game is Mutus. Mutus is a war veteran who fought in the Great War along with Yusus and Munos, Valen's father. 
But he is a racist old man. I'll tell you that he hates the Nordics so bad that he wants them all to be perished under his mind. But soon enough, he correlated with the darkness and worked with the dark ancient to revive the great war and the dark god behind it. And there's so much bigotry and racism behind it. But my god, sooner or later in the game, he's been restored as a young man, but still racist. But at the end of the game, after the high tournament was completed, he resurrected the statues with dark magic, and soon enough it struck the Emperor, and then Mutus come in and save the day as a great hero. But truthfully, back in the ground, at the root of his evil, he has one purpose, is to revive the Dark God and restore the glory of Imperia. Mutus is not only a villain, but another pawn to a game in the schemes. They don't know what's going on, but this is where they fight him at the very end. You only get to see him at the beginning of the game and the end, and that is it. Who is the pawn of the master? Here she is. The second villain of the Gladius is Nephilia, the great evil sorceress. Nephilia doesn't really show up until the third quarter of the game, where she decided to approach Val and Ursula in their school. She tempted them to the dark side of the Dark God's bidding, just like the inspiration from George Lucas of Star Wars, the dark side of the Force. Nephilia has executed every dark magic on the Legion and turned them into dark Legionnaires, and start amass a great war with the upcoming general, which I'm about to mention next. Next, in Ophelia, in the fourth corner of the game, she decided to ambush Val and Ursula with her minions and decide to stop them from executing their bidding. So to, but at the very end, she failed, but decided to continue her plan. But here's a third main villain from Gladius, and actually, he is actually a fourth main character, sort of. His name is Guasi. Guasi is a sacred ancient working for Nephilia. He decided to help out Val and Ursula claim the fourth tournament badge in order to participate in the high tournament, but things turn around and got backstabbed. That's another weakness about this game. Guasi has so much potential as a fourth main character, but he just quickly depleted. Like he was not. The fourth villain of Gladius is so tragic, it's actually Valen's childhood friend. They grew up together and trained, preparing for the high tournament glory, basking in their father's footsteps. His name is Ludo. The tragic tale of Ludo and betrayal of Valen's childhood friend, where he promised him that he'll help him reclaim his father's glory based off a of Munu school. But as you progress through the game, darkness has been rise and temptation for Nephilia, the sorceress. Ludo is just getting frustrated by Valen's. Then one day, Ludo had enough, enough. He left Valen's school and decided to go off somewhere. We have a same late until the third quarter of the game where he was completely different. His entire uniform was all purple and he had these glowing purple eyes and he would do any diabetes for Nephilia and her dream goal is reviving the Dark God. At the end of the game, you actually kick his butt, but he still survived and this potential sequel was going to happen, but unfortunately George Lucas got cancelled. Like I said, Gladius is a masterpiece, but one of the biggest weaknesses about this game is actually the end. It felt rushed. Like, for example, the background was all weak and the story just got so rushed, like, the guy cramp up all the characters and the writing into one location, and you're just like, whoa, slow down. Especially the ending is really disappointing, but it's rewarding at the same time. But overall, the disappointment, it just outweighs the reward of fulfillment by completing your goals, and it's a little bit tragic. But that doesn't stop that the game is actually still a masterpiece. Really, it is. I promise you. Let's talk about the ending of Gladius. You just decided to fight against the dark god has been resurrected from the ground. Ursula and Valon decide to fight it, and Ursula can contain her full potential of the Valkyrie light infinite power and slain the dragon, and Nephilia is like, out of here, Kudo, I'll see you in the sequel, but the sequel never happened, unfortunately. And therefore, Ursula decided to ascend up to heaven to join her ancestor and her grandmother who fought in the Great War. But Valen's like, no, baby, don't leave me. And Ursula's like, I have to. It's destiny. Destiny's calling me. And this is where the disappointment actually happened. It felt so rushed and it felt so forced. And you're just like, there's so many questions being left at the end of the game. You can play the high tournament, but you want a greater purpose behind it. You want to actually be part of the Great War. But this war is about to happen and still continue to happen without the Dark God. And therefore, Ursula is disappearing into the sky and Balan's like, I love you. But again, 
Her brother decided to let her go and be her own, and here all three main characters decided to join together and consult each other as Balan watches love disappearing into the sky. And that is actually it, Gladius. The video game from 2003. So many stories, so many dialogues, the swords and weapons, the costumes, the combat mechanic system makes you want to keep going further and further. It's like an addiction. And again, regardless of the negative stuff at the end, Overall, the game is a masterpiece, and I kid you not. I'm gonna give this game 9 out of 10, maybe almost 10 out of 10 if the ending wasn't rushed. I hope you enjoyed the review. This is Get Me Greek, and I'll see you later. <laughs>